Psalms 18, a lengthy one today, to the chief musician, head of charge, Asaph, a psalm of David, the servant of the Lord. That'd be great for us all to get from God, to be written by the Holy Spirit. You know, when we stand at the judgment seat of Christ, wouldn't it be great to say, your name come up, servant of the Lord? That'd be interesting. Well done. Who spank unto the Lord the words of this song. Here's the song. In the day that the Lord delivered him, David, from the, land, from the hand of his enemies and from the hand of Saul, and he said, now this is a repeat from 2 Samuel 22, and we, we've already done 2 Samuel 22, and it's on the YouTube and SoundCloud. And this is a very, very, this is important. It's repeated. And when God repeats something, it's important. When you find the, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ in all four Gospels, and you find the birth of Jesus once, I wonder what God puts his priorities in. A birthday or the Gospel? I wonder. So I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. That's what we're to love. We're to love the Lord. And even. When you look at a marriage, and Paul tells us as these Ephesians or Colossians that it's God, it's Jesus, it's the husband, it's the wife, then it's the children, and then it's the employers. God has set forth that same, and ought not to be, you know, with my wife, we love God more than we love you, we, we love Jesus more than you. That's perfectly fine. That's the balance. And when you've got God in your marriage, you've got God in a good marriage. Now, Solomon says a threefold cord is strong. God, the husband, and the wife. Even in a marriage, you'll love God more. If you love God, you'll love your wife. If you love God, you'll love your husband. You'll love your children. The Lord is my rock. And that's also said in 1 Corinthians 10.4 for the Christian. That's the rock that gave the water, the flinty rock, Jesus Christ. Deuteronomy says there's religions that have another rock. My fortress, that's a, that's a castle, that's a stronghold. My deliverer. God keeps me out and gets me out of trouble. My God. And one of the expressions you'll see throughout the Bible, and it's interesting, you know, go tell your God. Can you pray to your God? Well, your God gave. God is not your God. It's my God. My strength. In whom I will trust. God. My buckler. And that's the kind of suit that we, we, we call it would be a, a belt buckle. The horn of my salvation. The horn on the animal is strength. And a horn was used for anointing of oil. For the king, for the priest. The horn was also used as trumpets. And my high tower, you can see far away. I will call upon the Lord. That's the first thing you do when you get troubles. Then you call the pastor. Then you go call the doctor, whatever. Who is worthy to be praised. So you don't call on the Lord to say, hey, God, i got troubles, i got problems. You call the Lord, I just want to praise you. I just want to thank you. So shall I be saved from my enemy. A gun is not, a gun is protection, but God's the ultimate protection. The sorrows of death compass me. And Death is really, I mean, when you think about, yeah, we want to go home to glory, but it's also, you know, you, you don't want to leave your family. You don't want to leave them behind. You, you, you've got hopes, and yet we got absent from the body, present with the Lord still, you know. You want to go home, but you want to, you want, and you can't say the best of both worlds because there's nothing best in this world. And then there's sorrow for those that, that love you and you pass on. And the floods of the ungodly men, there's just tons of ungodly men, make me afraid. 
He's overwhelmed. He's overpowered. The sorrows of hell compass me about. Now, is David afraid of going to hell? No. So what's David afraid of? What's he saying? The devil and the devils and all the, the, the beings of, the, of hell itself that are on the enemies of the devil. He's, I'm surrounded by them. The devil has me marked and he's called out his agents to, to take. Listen, Saul was, a, was an agent of the devil. That guy, that guy lied to God. That guy did everything against God. That guy went to a witch. That guy was just wicked. Saul was an agent of the devil as Judas was an agent of the devil against Jesus. Not that David's going to hell. He's just, these guys are so wicked, so vile, I can almost smell the brimstone on them. And some Christians are like that. They love the Lord so well that they serve the Lord so well. When that guy gets up in the morning, the alarm cocks in hell go, hey, he's getting up. We got to get out there and try to stop that man because he, he'll he get someone saved today. And their, their place in hell would be taken away because their name would get in the Lamb's Book of Life. We got to, listen, the devil has aim. The devil calls up, his, listen, the devil called up his devils against Jesus. And there are some Christians that the devil gets his, his team in hell. Says, okay, go get him. Go follow him. First thing when the devil calls up is when the sower goes out and plants a seed, the first thing he has, he has the devil there taking the seed out of their heart. I think when the preacher's got a good message and you start hearing Bibles fall on the ground, I think the little devil's coming up and pushing them over. You say you really believe that? I believe that. What, you think because you're at church the devil's not going to come in? Anything to destruct the service, anything to destruct the heart. Anything they can do to stop someone from getting right with God. The snares of death, snares are traps, they're pits. They would dig a big hole to catch game animals like lions and all that. Prevent me. So I've got death, I got ungodly men, I got the beings of hell, and I got traps and all that, and I can't do all I need to do for God because man, I got an enemy out there. And when you look at the tribulation period, here we go again. Chapter 18, 6 plus 6 plus 6. The Jews have got the ultimate enemy of all enemies against the Jewish people, the Antichrist. And he's going to cast forth, at, especially after the three and a half years, he's going to cast forth all his powers to kill those Jews. He's even going to try to drink up the whole river of Jordan. According to Revelation 12. You say, how is that going to happen? I don't know, but I believe it. And in my distress, <laughs> yeah, that's just death, ungodly men, hells, beings, and, and traps. I'd be calling it my Lord too. I called on the Lord. I didn't call for the infantry. I called on the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple. Now, that's that place in the Old Testament where there was the Ark of the Covenant. There was the mercy seat. There was the incense altar. There was the candlestick. There was the table. There was God for the nation of Israel. And you got foolish people coming. They call their churches the temple. Baptist temple. Trying to say God's in it. This day and age, God's probably departing, standing outside the door, knocking on the door. And my cry came before him, God, even into his ears. I thought David, I thought we read things about David. Lord, hear my prayer. Lord God, why aren't you listening to me? David believed God heard him. But as all men, you know, God, you're not listening. <laughs> you haven't answered it yet. Even James and John one day, they're walking with Jesus. Jesus, you're going to call fire down like Elijah? <laughs> Jesus, like, oh. You know, we expect instant results when the enemy's out there. Look how long Saul chased David. Okay, so now we're definitely going to get to the second advent, verse 7 and on. Then the earth shook, earthquake, and trembled. And the foundations, also the hills moved. When the Lord comes back, 
great earthquake. Jerusalem is going to be the only elevation on this earth. The rest of the earth is going to go like flat, low round. I want you to think I'm a flat earth society. The whole earth is going to be a plane. And Jerusalem, Zion will be elevated. The only elevation in the world. That's going to do some shaking. And it doesn't say earthquake. It says the earth. Because when that happens, it's not just a crack in the earth like a fault in California. It's the whole entire world. That the people are saying, let the rocks fall on us. Instead of facing him on the horse. And we're shaken because he is wroth. Read Revelation 19. Now, you want to see the imitation of the Antichrist and the devil with God? All right, let's read God first. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils. This is God. A fire out of his mouth devoured coals were kindled by it. All right, Revelation 19. We'll see God first. Revelation 19. God is Jesus. Jesus is God. So. Revelation 19, 11. This is Jesus. This is what we're going to see in a moment in our psalm of chapter 18. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. He that sat upon him was called faithful and true. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And in righteousness he does judge and make war. Jesus, thou shalt not kill. Woohoo. His eyes were as a flame of fire, there it is, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no man knew but he himself. He was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God, John 1.1. 1, 1. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goes forth a sharp sword, there it is, and with it he should smite the nations. He shall rule with a rod of iron, and he treaded the winepress of the fierceness, there's the anger, the wrath of the wrath of the Almighty God. He had on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Now that's Jesus Christ. You want to see the devil? Job 41. Job 41, 19. I'll show you the devil. I'll show you the great imitation of the devil. And the Bible says, aren't you gods? 41.19, Job. Out of his mouth, now we, we studied this, you go find Job 41. This is the devil. Leviathan, verse 1. This ain't a crocodile, this ain't a hippopotamus, this ain't a horse. This ain't nothing but the devil. Out of his mouth goes burning lamps. And sparks of fire leap out. Out of his nostrils go forth smoke as it was a seething pot of cauldron. Not someone smoking a cigarette or a cigar or a pipe. That's it. Now look, look what it says here. Verse chapter 18, verse 8. Let's see God. They went up smoke out of his nose. Can you see God having a, a cigarette? No. Devil will. The devil's people will. And fire out of his mouth. Ever see, ever see somebody when they inhale and blow out that cigarette? It's got a red tip on it. And fire goes out of his mouth and devours the coals and kindles it. You're imitating the devil who's imitating God when you smoke. He bowed the heavens. Here comes the second advent. Also came down. And darkness was under his feet. What's the darkness? The universe. The sun, the moon, the stars are out. They're not lighted. He rode upon a cherub. Revelation says he's on a horse. And did fly. He's flying. I always thought it'd be funny if that <coughs> outside thing, that horse he comes back on as a unicorn. I don't know. He did fly upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness a secret place. 
Go outside and look to the north. What do you see? You see darkness. You don't see heaven. You see darkness. Behind that darkness is God. His pavilion round about him were dark waters. So Genesis 1 says, and, and God moved upon the face of the waters, I believe it says. And thick cloud of the sky. That cloud has something to do with the second advent. Has something to do with the Jews in the tribulation period. That cloud guided Israel by day in a pillar of fire by night. Pay attention to clouds in the Bible. The brightness that was before him, his thick clouds passed hailstones, that's in the tribulation, and coals of fire. Even Jesus said when he talks about, you know, we want to see signs from Jesus. He said, listen, you can discern that the signs of the sky and the weather. Does not the clouds come out and you got this kind of weather? The Lord thunderous, that's the voice of God. In the heavens, plural. And the highest gave his voice. Hailstones and coals of fire. Yay! That's what the devil said. He sent out his arrows and scattered them. He shot out lightning. Ow. And discomforted them. The chambers of the waters were seen in the solar system. And the fountains of the world were discovered. Foundation of the world were discovered. Somewhere in this world, there, the Bible says there's a foundation and there are pillars. And it says we're going to see that one day. We're discovered at thy rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of thy breath of thy nostril. That's the second advent. He sent me from above and took me and drew me out of many waters. Here's the rapture. And there is a mid-tribulation rapture. He delivered me from my strong enemy. Oh, gee, I wonder who that one is. Saul wasn't that strong. Saul couldn't even fight Goliath. Saul wanted David dead, and yet Saul faced David face to face twice, and he didn't kill David. That strong enemy is the Antichrist. And from them that hated me. Antichrist, Saul. Saul's a type of Antichrist. And for they were too strong for me. David won. David won. He gives God the glory of this song. And he said, listen, by my, if it wasn't for God, I'd be dead. They prevented me in the day of my calamity. But God was my stay. There it is. David's victory was God. He brought me forth also to a large place. How's that for glory in heaven? How's that for the land of Israel when the Jews taken out, probably set a feature, and brought in across the, the river Jordan like Joshua did, but Jesus Christ? Where you read in Acts in Hebrew, it says Jesus. It doesn't say Joshua. He delivered me because he delighted in me. Who does God delight in? Americans? No, I don't think so. Germans? I don't think so. God delights in the Jews. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. Now, I can't say that. But Jesus can. And what's the reward that Jesus gets from God? He judges. He gets all the earth. He becomes king of kings and lord of lords. He gets the throne of David. He gets the reign <clears throat> for all eternity. According to the cleanness of my hands, Jesus Christ had clean hands. Pilate tried to wash his hands, but Pilate said three times, and Herod said once, we find no fault in him. That's Jesus. For I have kept the ways of the Lord. That's Jesus. I have not, I have not wickedly departed from my God. That's Jesus. For all his judgments were before me. I did not put away his statue from me. That's Jesus. I was also upright before him and kept myself from my iniquity. Well, that's David. You know, David said, he says, I'm a sinner. 
I've sinned before God. And yet there's a sin that I do. And there were times that, you know, I said, no, I'm not doing it. And then there are times he fell into it. We all have those sins. We say no at one time and then we fall at another time. Therefore has the Lord recompensed me according to my righteousness. That's David. That's the law. David did what the law told him to do. According to the cleanness of my hands in his eyesight. That, that's hard to say for a person in the church age. Because if I say, Lord, I got clean hands, I go to Sunday service, I go to Sunday evening service, I go to Wednesday service, I read my Bible Monday, I read my Bible Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I preach on the street Saturday, I, 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 I hear hymns, and the Lord reminds me, and I, I lay in my bed trying to fall asleep, and God says, hey, what about that sin? I can't say, Lord, what sins are you talking about? Because I have sinned. With the merciful, that will show thyself merciful. God will treat you and how you. The Bible says, judge not, least ye be judged. Unless what merit you judge, God will judge you. With the upright man, I know, uh, with, so it show himself merciful. With the upright, Man, thou shalt show thyself upright. With the pure, thou shalt show thyself pure. With the forward, thou shalt show thyself forward. Good or bad? Good, you're going to get good. Bad, you're going to get bad. For that will save the afflicted people, people suffering, Jews in the tribulation period, but will bring down high looks. Look how, look how good I am. That, that guy, Lord, I, look how wonderful I tithe. Look how great I am. But I'm not like that guy over there. You bring that guy low to the ground. Well, look, Lord, look at me. Look how wonderful you Look at great. I, I'm going to tear with you now. I'm going to rebuild. And, oh, I'm just so magnificent. I'm just so great. And the rich man, you know, who cares about Lazarus out there? Lord, bring him down. For that will light my candle. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. A candle represents light. The church has a candle stick in Revelation. And the Jewish peoples will light a candle or use an electric one today. And that candle will be put out <coughs> at the death of that child. Or that candle will be put out when that child has believed on Jesus Christ as their Savior and they will have a mock funeral. What David's saying there, I got light. For by thee, God, I have run through a troop. David's saying, I'm strong by God. And by my God have I leaped over a wall. You find that in Joel 2, 7 and 25. That's us coming back. As for God, his way is perfect. That's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said, I'm the way. We saw truth. And we just saw a light with the candle. There's Jesus. The word of the Lord is tried. People try to put it away. People try to get rid of it. People try to burn it. People try to get rid of it. They try to hide it from the people. They, they try to break down the word of God. They try to destroy you, the word of God. It's still in our laps today. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. He's a buckler, like I said, like that belt. To all those that trust in him. You trust your pants being held by a buckle? You trust the Lord with the word of God keeping you going. For who is God save the Lord? No one. Who is, who is a rock save our God? Now look at that. Tell the Jehovah Witnesses on that one. I'm going to write that down because I missed that today. He's writing this down. Because there, who's God? God is God. Who's the rock? Who did Paul say the rock is? Who does the Bible say the rock is? Jesus Christ. What's the verse say? Read it, Jehovah Witness. Who is God? Save the Lord. Who saves? Jesus saves. Who is the rock? Save our God. The rock is God. The God is the rock. That's Jesus. 
take your kingdom halls and just throw them in the lake of fire. It is God that girdeth me with strength, not my armor, and maketh my way perfect. Jesus said, I'm the way. He maketh my feet like hinds feet. Have you ever seen these goats on mountains, rocky mountains? I've seen so many pictures on, on Facebook and all that. They got the, here's this big rock mountain. No dirt, no plants, just a rock. A sheer, and there are goats standing on that thing. That puts the shame, these, these rock climbing things. You know, they put the little steps and the people, they were, you know, you want to do that, go ahead. But these goats are standing on nothing on a rock. David says, that's what the Lord did to me. And strengthen, let me see, it setteth me upon a, setteth me upon my high places. He teaches my hands to war. Thou shalt not kill God. That must be not what that verse means. Jehovah Witness, so that a bow of steel is broken by my arm. Let me show you something. Revelation, I think it's five. Revelation five. I believe it's five. Five or six. Uh, six. Revelation six. Verse two. You don't think it, you don't think it's tribulation. Revelation 6, 2. And I saw, behold, a white horse. This is not the white horse, Revelation 12. I mean, 19. He that sat upon him had a bow. Uh-oh. That's the devil. That's the Antichrist. Look what follows him. Death and hell. Famine. Death. That bow is the Antichrist. He teaches my hand to war so that a bow of steel is broken by my arms. The Antichrist is going to get an arm and eye wound. Thou hast also given me a shield of thy salvation. The Christian shield is called faith. My salvation is Jesus Christ. My shield is Jesus. My faith is Jesus. And thy right hand, there's Jesus, has holding me up. And thy gentleness has made me great. I'm a great king only by God, David's saying. Thou hast large my steps, give him big feet, under me that my feet did not slip. And we read that the other night. David said, listen, I am not fallen because God is taking care of me. I have pursued my enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn again till they were consumed. I kept on fighting, kept on fighting. I didn't quit. I didn't give up. I have wounded them that were not able to rise. They are fallen under my feet. Again, you take that with Jesus coming back. We read that in Revelation 19. Thou hast girded me with strength into battle. Thou hast subdued under me those that rose up against me. That's Jesus and David. Thou hast also given me the necks of my enemies that I might destroy them that hate me. That's Jesus, and that's David. They cried, but there was none to save them. Even unto the Lord, but he answered them not. Proverbs says he'll laugh at them at their calamity. The only ones he'll save is the, the sheep nation that helped the Jew. Everybody else will be destroyed. Then did I beat them small as the dust before the wind. Revelation 19. I did cast them out as the dirt in the street. Revelation 19. Thou hast delivered me from the strivings of the people. And thou hast made me the head of the heathen. David's the head of the, of the Jewish people. He's not a king of the Gentiles. A people whom I have not known shall serve me. Notice the Gentiles in the, in, the, in the millennium. As soon as they heard me, uh, as soon as they hear of me, they shall obey me. Millennium. And, and one of the prophets speaks about, they're going to grab hold of the Jews and say, God is with you. Show me the way to the Messiah. And the horses will have bells and this holiness to the Lord. 
the strangers, Gentiles, not, not the Israelites, shall subdue, submit themselves to me. That's Jesus and David. The strangers shall fade away and be afraid out of close places. Who's the strangers? Of Jesus Christ, they're the goat nation. The Lord liveth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Blessed be my rock. There's Jesus. Again, that, that's 1 Corinthians 10, 4. Let the God of my salvation be exalted. There's Jesus. Got many crowns. He rules him with a rod of iron. It is God that avenges me, David, and subdued the people under me, David. He delivers me from my enemy, David, Jesus. Yea, thou liftest me above those that rise up against me, Jesus, David. Thou hast delivered me from the violent man. The, the, the violent man. One. Antichrist. Saul. Therefore will I give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen. Sing praises unto thy name. We're going to be singing in the millennium. Great deliverance giveth he to his king. David kind of went third person plural there. Who's God's king? Jesus. King of kings, Lord of lords. And showeth mercy to his anointed. You know what that means in the New Testament? That means Christ. Christ means anointed. The anointed one. To David. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, David. Gives difference to, the, to his king. Okay, there's the king, his king. Shows mercy to his anointed. That's the Christ. To David. David's not saying he's the king, and David's not saying he's the anointed, though he is the anointed king of Israel. He says, To the king, to the anointed, and me, David. It says it's a psalm of David. And to his seed forevermore, and what's the seed of David? The Israelites, the Jewish people. 